Welcome back to another ice camping adventure. We are set up on a local lake here in the metro. I have fished this spot for the last two days and every single night I'm getting into a ton of walleye. I found the perfect lake and I'm sitting on a drop off going from seven feet down to about 21. We're fishing a little bit deeper than we were in the last video. If you guys haven't seen the last video, we caught a few walleye on this exact same spot, but I was sitting in about 12 or 13 feet. Today we're seeing if these fish wanna come into 16 or 17 feet. Our main target species for today is of course walleye. I'm gonna mainly try to target walleye, but along with that, the last video, I caught four crappie over 12 inches that I didn't even put in the video because it was a walleye fishing video. This lake has some absolutely insane crappie numbers and crappie size. So along with targeting walleye, I'm gonna throw in some crappie here and try to maybe throw down some different baits and see if we can maybe pull up some really big crappie. If we have to, I'm gonna get outside this tent tonight and I'm gonna start hole hopping because I wanna get as much fish as I can for this ice camping adventure. It's an ice camping adventure, so I wanna do some camping, have some fun sleeping on the ice. But along with that, it's an ice fishing adventure. So of course we want to catch some fish. I want to make it as entertaining as I can for you guys. So we've got a camera on our underwater fishing camera so you guys can see the fish bite during the day. And along with that, we've got a camera on the Vexlar so you guys can see the marks coming up to my bait as I eat. If there's anything else you guys would like to see in the videos, let me know down below and I will go pick it up just to make the videos more entertaining. As always, new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11. And stay tuned for some tips and tricks throughout the video. Hope you guys enjoy this week's ice camping adventure. Let's get camping. We are gonna start out with a 1 8 ounce Acme Rattlemaster. It is the Color Glow Bloody Bug. We got it tipped with a crappie minnow. Gives it a little bit more of a flutter. It's a 1 8 ounce Rattlemaster, and it is my go-to bait for catching early ice crappies, walleye, pike, bass. It catches just about anything. We got the underwater camera rolling. We're gonna drop down here, and we're gonna see how long it takes to pull a fish out. Shouldn't be too long, especially with this spot. As you guys see, we got a few fish marked on the graph. Let's drop all the way down to the bottom. Let's see if we can mark something. Oh, as you guys can see, there's the bait right there. Something else is slowly going down. Looks like uh, some kind of mud or something. All right, nothing at three feet. Let's work up to about six feet off the bottom. See if there's any fish suspended up. I try to work maybe five, 10 minutes at each, uh, each depth just to see. I mean, I haven't fished this exact spot, but I have fished this part of the lake. But I would assume these fish could be suspended up. I like to work as much water as I can to try to find fish here. Kind of work it all, let my spoon flutter back down. I'm trying to get the spoon's action here. You know, I'm kind of trying to give it that natural flutter by pulling it up and letting it do its own thing down. It gives it a really nice flutter. All right, we are gonna drop back down here to the bottom and uh, just jig around the bottom a little bit. fish on. I was setting up my my uh, fan and this uh, perch just came out and smacked it. I'll take it. Fat perch too. First fish is a nice big old perch. Choppy fella. Kiss for good luck and right back the hole. You guys would have seen it on the underwater camera. I was messing with my fan trying to change out the batteries and came out and smoked it. Awesome. We're gonna keep on fishing, and uh, if there's one, especially with perch, there's gonna be more. If you guys are looking to get into ice camping, I have all of my ice camping gear linked down below. All my fishing gear and all my ice camping gear is linked in the description. If you guys are looking what to get, how I do it, and everything put together, because it's not just a tent you gotta set up. You gotta have a tent, you gotta have a heater, you gotta have floor mats, you gotta have a cot. I have a power station to charge all my gear, which is mostly for just my Vexlar and my camera gear. But there's a lot that goes into ice camping that people don't realize. I'm gonna give you guys one tip right now that has saved me from being super, super cold in the night. And people don't realize this. This is for ice fishing and ice camping. If you have a heater, a lot of people have these portable buddy, big buddy, any kind of portable heater, all your heat rises. If you guys have ever taken any science class, heat rises. So you're sleeping pretty close to the ground, aren't you? All your heat is going in the air. I don't think anybody's sleeping on the roof. So what you wanna do is you wanna spend 10 or $15 on a portable fan. I have this fan mounted to one of these brackets here and it literally just sits here. The hot air comes up and it pushes that hot air onto me. Okay, because I'm not sleeping on the roof. I don't need to be up there. All the hot air is usually gonna be up here because it all rises. So your floor stays really cold 
and up here is hot. So what you gotta do is you really just gotta get a fan. I mean, I even put these in my flip over ice tents when I'm ice fishing, just not even ice camping in general. If I have a heater, I don't want the hot air to be up there. Get a fan, you can mount it up here, you can mount it down here. No matter what, you want it facing downwards. You want the hot air to come down onto you. It doesn't need to go straight down. I have an angle to where my cot is right there and the fan is pushing the hot air straight onto my cot. So when I'm sleeping, all that hot air is going onto me. It's not going to the roof. And I'm telling you, $15 or $10 for a fan is gonna keep you 10 times warmer when the hot air is going straight towards you. So that's just a little tip to start off the video for you guys who are looking at getting into ice camping. I use it for my normal ice fishing tents as well, but we're gonna get back to fishing here because I got a few fish on the graph. All right, there's my bait there, and now we can jig around and see if more perch wanna come through. That perch would have been tasty. I mean, that was a big perch. Nice, chunky perch. I wonder if I want to set up a dead stick. I only have one rod out right now. I'm kind of curious. Do I want to set up like a dead stick or something? I mean, I could throw down a dead stick. I could throw down a rattle reel. I might do that. Otherwise, I was going to... Who is texting me right now? All right. Five bucks. It's my mom. It is my mom. All right. Uh-huh. My dog found a squirrel outside. Breaking news, guys. Absolutely breaking news. I'll, uh, I'll throw you guys a picture so you guys can see the dog. I know, I know you guys are curious here. Yep, she, she's looking at a squirrel right now. Oh, yep, she sees the squirrel. That is text worthy right there. Scoping out the squirrels. Oh, there's still a perch down there. We're gonna drop back down to them. There's one more thing I forgot to mention. This week that I'm fishing, actually the next couple days, like tomorrow, I should just say, tomorrow, it's gonna be a high of negative 33. The real feel, high, it's negative 33. We are fishing into the night, going from right now, I think it's negative five right now. We're going, we're fishing into negative 33 degrees. I mean, this is like some extremely cold temperatures that we're fishing today. I mean, extreme cold, cold temperatures. Yeah, we are, we're really fishing into some extreme cold. I mean, a high of negative 33 for tomorrow is, is definitely something. That is some very cold temperatures that we're gonna be ice camping in. Oh, what's that right there? What is that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a walleye right there, you guys see that? That's a walleye right there. That's what I'm after, come on. Come on, buddy. Swing back around, swing back around. Oh, you guys see that? There is first walleye I've seen in the night so far. Oh, I'm marking him. He's, oh, he might have just dipped. Came in and just dipped. First walleye of the night though. We've seen him, means they're here. I like that. We got this guy right here. There's a little sunny. That's kind of looking at it. I don't know if he's gonna want to eat, but he is right there under it. We're going to see if he's going to come up and eat. I'm going to let my bait do all the work here. I don't, wanna, I don't really want to touch it too much. I'm just going to kind of wait and see. Curious to see if he'll come up. I think he will, but then again, I'm not entirely sure here. They seem to be pretty finicky today. I'm hoping the nighttime turns around and they just start coming in like crazy and we can get into some fish tonight. I'm wondering how like the in the middle of the night bite's going to be. Because I've never... Uh, Never fished this lake in the middle of the night. I've never ice camped it. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how the bite is going to be. I'm thinking it's going to be really good. Especially like if I get up at like 4.30 in the morning, start dropping down. I'm curious to see if we can get some walleye. Early morning walleye. I'm thinking that might be my best time to, to chase them is really early in the morning. Look at that guy right there. Look at him right there. No. He dipped. I look over in the wall, I came through and dipped. I'm curious to see if he'll swing back around. In about 15 minutes, I'm no longer going to be able to see the camera. So we have to wait till tomorrow. But they're going to start biting tonight. I got a good feeling we're going to at least get into some fish tonight. I mean, it's a camping video. Fishing is just the, the bonus, but I do really want to get into some good fish tonight. I'd love to get into some nice walleye. I don't think I'm gonna have that much problem with it either. Oh, bobber just went down. Fish on. 
fish on. Bobber went down and he came out. Let's see what we got here. It's giving me a good fight. It's got to be a walleye. Yep, first walleye of the night. I was kind of hoping I'd get one to eat the spoon, but we'll take it. Beautiful walleye right there. About 14, 15 inches. She is going to be a keeper, so I'm going to keep this guy, have it for dinner tomorrow, along with hopefully the other ones we catch, but that's awesome. All right, kiss for good luck. I'm going to put her on the ice and first walleye of the night. Awesome. They are definitely biting, and let me tell you, they are here. I've seen 10 in the last maybe 30 minutes. All right, I'm going to, gosh, every time I like look away for a second, something happens, it is pretty quick. Oh, oh, uh, look at what I said. Okay, that was 100% a walleye, first of all. 100% a walleye. Took my bobber all the way down, felt a lot of weight right there. I told you, every time I look away, fish comes up and tries to eat. Should have maybe given him a little bit longer there. I'm using these pretty big fat heads and they seem to be liking it. Am I a little disappointed I just lost what's 99% sure was a walleye? Yeah, maybe a little. Okay, put that there. Yeah, my bobber went all the way under. I have a big fat head on that too. I mean, like, if it was a crappie that ate that, it had to have been at least like a 12 inch crappie. I have a sucker minnow size fat head on that. And the bobber went all the way down. I pulled up and there was weight and we just didn't get them. That's all right though. I'm having a ton of walleye come through right now. So this is, this is really good. Really, really good. All right, I'm gonna go pee outside real quick. So if my bobber or rod goes down or goes in the water, it's your guys' fault. You know what I thought of? I'm gonna have my mic on, you guys are gonna hear it. Um, mic's gonna get turned off for a quick second. I could edit this out, but like, what's the point in that? I mean, where, where's the fun in that? I'm gonna turn the mic off for a quick second here and uh... Wow. When I showed up today, there was nobody on the lake. There are six tents within like 100 yards of me right now. Three that direction and three that direction but nobody's on the prime spot. They're all sitting over there in seven feet of water. These guys are sitting over here in also seven feet of water. They're all crappie fishing. They don't even know. They don't even know about the walleye here. Let's keep it that way. We are gonna get hit with a lot more snow tonight than I thought. I mean, when I wake up, it's gonna be like negative 30 degrees, but I'm gonna show you guys a video outside right now. It is gonna snow a lot tonight. We're gonna get snowed on. What I'm really worried about is the last time I got snowed on in the tent, this came down. The top of this tent came down. I don't, I don't want that to happen today, but uh, we're gonna get hit with a lot of snow. I'll show you guys what it looks like outside. Look at it out here. Man, snow is coming down. It's kind of hard to tell here. It won't focus, but wow. Yeah, it is, uh, it is definitely, definitely snowing right now if you guys can kind of see that if I've said it once I'm gonna say it again snowstorms and cold fronts are some of my favorite times to ice fish walleye because the barometric pressure drops when it starts getting super cold like this you have these big temperature changes going from what were we at negative 5 to like negative 30 these big temperature changes cause the barometric pressure to drop and any kind of weather event even cloudy skies cause it to go a little bit lower but a big snowstorm like this is gonna cause it to drop a lot and is gonna get these fish to be active. So if we start catching some walleye tonight, think about that. Go out fishing right before or during a snowstorm and you're gonna catch fish. So that's, that's one reason why I have really high hopes for tonight. Yes, we're, we're gonna be fishing in a little bit of a snowstorm, a little bit of a weather event here, but it's gonna produce some fish. And I would rather be out in terrible weather catching fish than be out in nice weather not, so. We're gonna stick it out all night tonight, probably even tomorrow night. If we stick it out tomorrow night too, that will be Friday's video. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get it done, that is for sure. I'm just enjoying being here. I love it, I mean, I, I love being on the ice. 
it's, I mean, I can just sit back and relax. I mean, what, look at this. I mean, this is like, this is like the bougie way to fish. Sit back in here, get under the nice covers, and whew, now this is what I call comfortable fishing. Now we just wait for the fish. I mean, this is living the life right here. I mean, this is like, this is like I'm sleeping in my bed, jigging a rod. Oh, see you guys in like 20 minutes. These fish like to eat when I'm uh, least expecting it. Let's crack open some chips. I'm gonna start chowing, watch a little TikTok, and I'm telling you, well, I'm not expecting it. I'm gonna see a fish on that graph. Spent about 10 minutes eating chips and uh, no fish ate my bait in that time. I'm actually a little disappointed. Usually I like to eat when I'm least uh, paying attention. Not tonight. I'm just gonna have to keep jigging. Just keep jigging for him. Oh, that's my bobber down. Oh, how did I not even notice that? Fish on, fish on. How did I not even notice my bobber was down? It's a nice fish. I was taking my main rod out of the water and sending down a rattle reel. My bobber went down. I'll let this guy fight. It's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Yep, there we go. That's a nice walleye. Not a monster, but I mean, I just sent this bait down in the other hole. Like, what, not even a minute ago? Messing with something else and my bobber went down. They are definitely wanting these big baits tonight. So I was going to stop jigging for a little bit and throw down two dead sticks or throw down a dead stick and a rattle reel. But I mean, maybe I'm just going to have to start jigging with some bigger baits. Look at that, guys. Absolute beauty. I know the lights aren't on right now because I was moving my Vexlar, but caught him. Another fish probably about 15 inches. Beauty, absolute beauty. We are gonna keep fishing, guys. All right, we are sending this dead stick right back down. I had it maybe six inches off the bottom. Dropped it down about a minute ago and it already got eight. So we're gonna drop right back down, all the way down to the bottom here. Put that down and there's already a fish on the dead stick. Okay, this is awesome. I think the ticket for tonight is going to be bigger baits. Uh, I'm probably just going to keep switching between having a dead stick down and having a rattle reel down. Because the dead stick's got a little bit smaller bait than the rattle reel. I do want to just jig for a while though. I mean I sent that, uh, that dead stick down and within what? A few minutes it got eight. So that's a really good sign. Alright, let's see. Oh no, my heater turned off. That's not good. Hoping to stay warm tonight. We're gonna see how well that, why are you doing this? I have propane, so why are you being such a burden to me? Do I gotta go shake the propane tank again or something? Man, you know what? You know what drives me crazy? It is almost 2023 and I still have so many problems with my buddy heaters or any portable heater I've used. When is a company gonna come out with a perfect heater that doesn't have a problem? I feel like I have to shake my tank, which isn't the heater's fault, it's the propane tank. I feel like I have to shake it every hour or two or else it turns off. Or just, I mean, right, what is it doing? Why is it not working? Half the time they just don't work and it drives me nuts. Like I don't know what to do. Like I shake the tank, it, it should be working. I mean, you gotta have heat, so. Yeah, I don't know what to do here. I'm gonna have to figure it out tonight. Cause it was working uh, 
a couple nights ago when I took it out. And now, I don't know if it's the propane, and it's turned off now. This is gonna be a long night. I'm really hungry right now, so I'm gonna attempt to order a pizza to the lake. The only problem with this is, the lake doesn't have an address. The boat launch that I go out of that is on the lake it doesn't have an address. So I'm gonna order a pizza and a sandwich here. I'm just gonna say, for the address, I marked a house that is pretty close here. And I said, it's not the house, it's the boat launch to the right of the house. There's a house, then there's a boat launch. I'm just gonna say, no, it's not the house, it's the boat launch. And then I don't think he's gonna walk out to the lake, so I'm just gonna go put on my, uh, my gear and walk out to the boat launch, like half a mile back, grab my pizza, and head all the way back here. Should be here in 35 minutes as soon as I place the order. But I mean, it should work. I don't see why not. It's a little expensive, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. I'm starving, so I'm just gonna order a pizza to the lake. Give it a try. What can go wrong? All right, I just got a notification. The guy bringing the pizza is gonna be here in one minute. I'm gonna head out to the boat launch and be right back, guys. That food was delicious. My mics had to die. So I had a little bit of commentary during the uh, food review, but you guys didn't get that because the mics decided they want to die. But that's all right. I got them charging now, so we're all good. I took out the jig and rod. I got the dead stick down and I, I put down a uh, rattle reel. So I'm just gonna kind of sit back, relax for the rest of the night and see if anything takes the rattle reel or the dead stick until I go to bed. Then I'm taking the dead stick out and just leaving the rattle reel. Probably gonna stay up for a few hours later and just kind of see what happens tonight. See if any fish come through. I haven't had anything on the graph in like an hour and a half. So for the rest of the night, I think I'm just gonna kind of sit back and relax. All right, it has been another probably hour and a half and have not marked anything. I just noticed that it was so cold in here that I was sleeping right next to the heater and I just spent the last hour and a half with my face towards the heater and it almost sunburned me. I mean, look at my face. I look like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I am all red because I've been sitting right next to the heater. I didn't even know it could do that. I had not had a single bite, so we are going to head to bed. I am getting pretty tired, and it is time to go to bed. Yeah, I'm going to get up really early in the morning, and we're going to target some more walleye and see how the morning walleye bite is. I will see you guys in the morning. Hopefully, I can fall asleep because it is uh, still a little cold in here, even with the heater. Good night. That was one cold, cold night. Even with the heater, everything in here froze. All the holes froze back up. My uh, temperature says it was 24 degrees. I probably woke up 15, 20 times over the night. It was cold. I mean, look at this stuff. Everything froze. This whole tent froze. Even on the inside. I mean, look at all this, it's all frozen. I'm hoping it's gonna close back up when I need to get out of here. Everything froze. So, yeah, I'm hoping the fish are gonna wanna bite because I'm cold. That was a cold, cold night. I gotta figure out, maybe get a second heater. I might go to a store today, go buy another heater because it's cold. I mean, my holes froze back up, so that's not good, but it's about 5 o'clock in the morning now. I might start jigging around and see if, see if some fish want to bite. Well, it has been two hours, maybe even three. It's about 10.30 right now. So it's been, yeah, it's been almost three hours without a single fish on the graph, mark or anything. So I just decided to pack up. It's been about two and a half hours without a bite, and I'm not just gonna sit here and fish for two more hours 
when the last two hours has been pretty, pretty dead. But what we are gonna do is we are gonna go fish a new lake. I'm gonna drive almost two hours up north and we're gonna fish a lake that my buddies have caught some massive walleye and some massive crappie out of. And one more thing this lake has that not a lot of lakes have is you can catch catfish through the ice. I've always wanted to do that and even a chance to get a cat through the ice would be awesome. So we're gonna give that lake a try, but before we do that, I wanna give you guys a few more tips on ice camping. If you're gonna get into ice camping or if you're thinking about getting into ice camping, I wanna give you guys these tips so you guys know what to do when it comes down to it. A few things that I did last night that were absolutely just super, super dumb. And no, this isn't my first time ice camping. There is no reason I should have went ice camping and not brought either another heater or more blankets. I had a single blanket, no sleeping bag at all. I'm telling you guys, you do not want to get on the ice and sleep overnight with no sleeping bag. My problem was I've never ice camped in this cold conditions. Last night was honestly, I think by the end of the night, it, the real temperature was about negative 11 and the real feel was negative, I think 27. Right now it's negative 14 and negative 39 degree real feel. Yes, we're fishing in negative 39 degrees. Not my ideal conditions, but if we can get the fish to bite, we can get the fish to bite. I'm guessing they're going to be a little bit slower or a little bit less active with this cold weather, but I got no option here. I want to post a video. It is Tuesday night and I am fishing into Wednesday morning tonight. So yes, you're seeing this video on Wednesday if you're seeing it as it comes out. I want to get this video. I'm going to edit it while I'm fishing on the ice so I can post it on Wednesday tomorrow at 11. So a couple things I want to go over. First, before we hit the lake. You want to stay warm and it depending on what tent you're going to be ice camping in. Mine is 101 square feet. My one heater is not nearly enough. You want either two heaters or one big heater. I have a portable buddy heater. It puts out 9,000 BTU. You want at least 15,000 BTU if you're using about 100 square feet, I'd say. Anything over 80 square feet, you want at least 15,000 BTU. If you don't know the BTU, you could just look at it on your heater. They usually say Sunflower Heater, Big Buddy. Hunting Buddy, I think, is 12,000. Big Buddy is 18,000. Sunflower is 15,000. You can put two portable buddies together. You can put one hunting buddy together. You do not want to be cold okay i froze last night but i stuck it out because i want to catch fish my toes my little toesies they were cold they were not warm at all and it was not fun whatsoever i don't even know if i got any sleep last night it was a pain the actual temperature inside the tent all night was 24 degrees try sleeping in 24 degrees okay even with the heater a single small heater that produces 9,000 btu is not enough Okay, you want at least two, one on each side. If you're using a smaller tent, even like a 40 to 50 square feet, I would even use a little bit bigger of a heater. The last thing you want is to be cold. I don't care if you're catching 100 fish. Even me, if I'm catching fish left and right, but I'm cold, it's not fun, all right? It is not fun. You wanna be warm. I don't know you guys, but I love to be warm. If I'm cold, I'm not having fun. I like to stay warm. So the last thing you wanna do is be cold, let's be honest, all right? So if you're gonna get into ice camping, depending on what tent you get. I'm assuming you're gonna get a tent that's close to 100 square feet for ice camping. Solo ice camping, you can get away with about 60 square feet depending on how much gear you have. Make sure your heater is enough to heat up your tent. Along with the heater, get a carbon monoxide detector, okay? You do not wanna die. If you die, who's gonna catch all the walleye? All right, let's be honest, guys. Get a carbon monoxide detector because you do not wanna be asleep and not even tell. You can't tell it. There's no way to know if there's carbon monoxide. You're just gonna pass out and boom. Your family's not going to be too happy. So get one. Spend the 60, 50, 60 bucks it costs to get one. Most of them will tell you the inside temperature too. That's why I knew it was 24 degrees. And I should have had two heaters. I'm actually going to go to a store right now and buy a second heater because I, the next time I ice camp, these next four nights are going to be negative 35 degree real feel as a high. So I've never camped in this cold of temperatures, but let me tell you, without a nice heater, nice setup, insulated tent, you're not going to have fun. You're gonna want two heaters or one really big heater. Those sunflower heaters do a really good job of keeping your tent warm. So I'm gonna go upgrade to that. I'm gonna spend some money, but it's, it's what you gotta do. It is really what you gotta do. I just got my, where is it? Where is it? Guess what just came in the mail? Live scope. We're taking it out to the lake today. We're gonna go fish with some live scope. But I had to add this in, just to, you guys don't understand how much ice safety is important. I don't wanna see any of you guys having some problems on the ice. All right, so I wanted to make a quick segment in today's video just to talk about some ice safety features because you wanna stay warm, you wanna be safe. The last thing I want is to hear a story about you or one of your friends and then something bad happened on the ice because falling through the ice is a big issue, but there are a lot more, even important issues like frostbite. The last thing you want 
is to lose one of your fingers, all right? So just be safe out there, guys. Get the right heater for the right tent. Look at how much square feet it is and look how much square feet your heater can do. I think the Portable Buddy can do 40 square feet. So I'm, I'm half of that right now. I'm half. I should be at two Portable Buddies to cover 80. Not even, I'm not even half. So just be safe out there, guys. Just seriously be safe. Make sure you have the right gear. Get a sleeping bag. Don't be like me and just have a blanket. I'm going to bring my sleeping bag out. I'm going to have all the nice gear for the next time. I just want to make this segment so you guys know some ice safety tips. But uh, yeah, always check the ice before you go out ice camping. Make sure you got a good heater. Make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector. And make sure you have the right gear because you don't want to be cold. It is time to get out fishing, guys. I got to drive about two hours before we get there. And we're going to go have a blast. I'm going to throw whatever fish we catch. Hopefully we catch some fish here. I'm going to throw these fish in the end of today's video to add on to it. Hope you guys did enjoy this part of the video so far. I will see you guys at the lake. Oh, oh, something just, oh. Wow. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Dude, that's a monster something. If that's a walleye, dude. <laughs> I don't know if my line can even That's handle it. Over three feet. The fish was over three feet. He's right there. Dude, that's the 36 inch walleye down there. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, 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 no way, no way, no way. Uh, oh no, he's coming to this little thing? He's coming in. Dude, no way. Just dropping. That's a big. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, he's on it. He's got it. He's got it. Got him. Got him. I'll get another. I'll get another camera angle here. Oh my gosh. My reel's not tight. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a cat. I saw the size. I don't, and it's a cat. Well, that is not exactly what I was expecting that fish to be. I, I honestly thought you just had a monster walleye. So did I. That's all right. It's a cat. I mean, dude, that's a, it's a sick, it's a sick catch right there. That, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, dude, it's gave you a fight. Now, could it have been a 30 inch walleye? <laughs> could have. Could have been. But dude, that thing came in, that is sick. Congrats, man. Here's the catch. <laughs> Let me look at this thing. Big old kitty cat. He's gonna go right back in the water. Nice fish, man. That get, is. Get up quick, just cause it's my first cat through the ice. Get him, man. First cat through the ice. Oh yeah, get that selfie. Oh, you want me to, oh, you no, want me to get, oh, dude. It. You're gonna look gorgeous. Pro fisherman. Anybody can catch walleye, but can you catch a catfish <laughs> to the ice? That's the question. Okay, okay. Oh, dude. That looks like a 10 pounder right there. That's what we want. Beauty. There's a big fish down there. That's, there's a few big fish. Look at them. If you guys can kind of see, I'll wait till it shows up on screen. It should be coming right here. There's my bait coming down right there. Slowly making his way down, and these are all fish. I'm gonna drop it right in front of those two fish and wait for one of them to come up here. He's sitting right next to it. Oh, here comes this other fish. Oh, oh, oh. This guy's coming right into it. He's on me. Fish on. This is a little fish. <laughs> I got him to eat though. I mean, micro worked. Saw him on the live scope too. Came in right, right on to me. Super little guy, but first fish that I've caught on the new live scope. Look at that guy. Just a little baby. Drop it right back down. First fish on the live scope was absolutely Mega. massive.